Welcome to Art Scene at SMC. I'm Dave, and I'm here with my guest Tim Devon, who is a friend of SMC and uh, has been in this studio in one capacity or another before. Um, welcome to you, Tim. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Tim is going to be co-curating a show uh, through December and into January here at SMC called Somerville Small Press Publications Over the Years. Um, Tim works over at the Somerville Public Library, and he's put together a great small press collection there. Um, a zine and small press enthusiast, a zine maker himself. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you have to tell us about this show? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm putting it together with my coworker Meg Ragland, who manages the local history collection. And so what we've done is we've assembled a bunch of um, small press zines, pamphlets, books, uh, comics, dating back from the late 60s uh, to today. And so we're gonna be showing them here at SMC and we're really excited about it. Uh, so what's kind of interesting, what I think is kind of interesting is seeing like the wide variety of stuff that's been around over the years. Like this for instance is Radical America, which is, was published um, right across uh, Union Square from here. Oh wow. Uh, it was put out um, in the, the office was in the, um, where the East Boston Bank is now. I forget what that address is. Huh. Um, but you know they had a bunch of different offices there. And that was in the, the 70s. So in the 70s, um, Union Square was sort of this hotbed of radicalism, right? And so a lot of these organizations had their own um, publications. So we've got some of those. We've got Dollars and Cents Magazine from that time period. Dollars and Cents was sort of a populist, leftist take on, um, on uh, economics. Right, and it was a national magazine. It was published, you know, right down the street. Very cool. And so we've got those, and those are both from Meg's collection. Um, we've got. And so what Meg, Meg yeah. focuses more on one type of, of publication, and you focus on another one. Yeah, so it's like it, it's divided by time, right? Like there's no real. It's kind of arbitrary what the day is, but um, you know, she's got the stuff up till the 1980s, and I've got stuff after that. And so they're actually located in two different parts of the building, which um, makes sense because the older stuff is in our local history room, so it's, um, it's you know, climate controlled and whatnot. And it's publicly accessible, you know, you can walk in and just take a look at that stuff. The zines are, and comics are located um, on the second floor right near graphic novels, and everybody's welcome to check and those out. And those are out. in the circulation area, yep. people mm -hmm. can actually check those yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got about 250, 300 items right now, um, and we're looking for more. So if you have some stuff you think we should get, as long as it's local, you know, get in touch. Cool. Um, what else do you have? But yeah, so um, yeah, so it's kind of fun to see like the evolution of this stuff. So huh. Somerville Community News was another one that was published in um, Union Square for a while, and it that's cool. That is like, like 24 <laughs> point type. <on> <laughs> I know, like it, like they had to fill up the page, but it was yeah. uh, it was published in two different languages, so it was cool. also published in Portuguese, right? So they were trying to, um, you know, leftist uh, political issues in a popular format. And what's and, the what's the date on that one? Yeah, so this one is from 1980, wow. and they published from the 70s until the 90s. Wow. And um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, so we've got everything from that on down to zines and poetry chapbooks. Um, this is another favorite of mine, High Five Magazine, which not like the one that your children read, this one is news and underground events uh, in Somerville, Boston wide, but also uh, focusing on Somerville, which was put out around uh, 2010. And it has some really fun illustrations in this like cut and paste kind of style. Um, Anyway, pretty hard to find stuff, and so we're really lucky to have it. Cool. Um, yeah. So. And so, where where does the 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 love of small press like? What's the appeal to you? What's the appeal to me? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what I think is really interesting about it is the kinds of ideas that are expressed in small press literature. Uh, people 
gravitate towards self-publishing because they have a viewpoint that they want to get out there, mm. and this is the best means that they've come up with to do that, right? So, and like often, like mainstream uh, means um, aren't necessarily interested in in something yeah. in, in a yeah. lot of esoteric. Kind yeah. of uh, kind of viewpoints, and so yeah. you know, if you have a Xerox machine, you can yeah. you can disseminate your your viewpoint, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a really liberating thing. Like, so I make my own zines. Dave makes uh, uh, comics, and so it's a, it's a great way to to get your ideas out there and be in control of it, and not have to compromise like your vision and operate on somebody else's timeline. Uh, it's more immediate in that way, and it's also um, you know more control of the output. Um, and so I think that that's one of the reasons people really like it. Um, and yeah, so what I find as a reader, one of the things that I like as a reader is seeing these like local viewpoints. So our collection is um, local, locally produced work, right? So Somerville specific, you know, about 50% of the collection is Somerville, 75% is Somerville, something like that. The rest is, you know, Boston or Cambridge. So a lot of these are like local issues, right? Like, um, you know, personal local issues. I'm trying to find what I'm thinking of right now. Um, so, like Dave Tabor's one pager, uh, <laughs> which you know is about uh, you know going shopping around Somerville. Um, and I don't know. It's just fun to see people's viewpoints of your community. You know. Yeah. Um, so Marissa Falco, who unfortunately was priced out recently, lives in the Bay Area now. But she was a really big like zinester back, you know, up until about five years ago when she left. And so here's a zine where she just talks about being a creative artist in Somerville with her friend who's also a, a creative artist in Somerville and like the trials and tribulations that they go through. Mm. And so that's really like interesting to think about. Um, another interesting one is Mousy, which was a 90s um, publication by Anna Rampage. And it, um, here's the official explanation, features articles, collages, and poems that explore bisexuality and interracial desire in the Boston area. And, um, you and know. From when, when is that? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, 1992 to 1994. Huh. Um, so, like, definitely those kinds of viewpoints have, have entered the mainstream a little yeah. more. Yeah. Um, but, you, yeah, not, like, in the 80s and 90s, certainly in the era before the 80s and 90s, they would be kind of radical ideas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you wouldn't, you know, on one hand, you wouldn't necessarily be able to get those ideas out through, like, official channels, right? And on the other hand, there's all these people out there who share these views, and they want to feel a connection to other people in their area who share these views, right? Um, so it becomes like a, like a network, you know, like people trade their zines, people you know, subscribe. Um, there's another favorite of mine, Purr, the newsletter for cat lovers, <laughs> which predates LOL cats by like 20, 30 years. And it was published in Union Square. And like, so apparently, I was reading about this, apparently. I um, love this guy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like this line drawn. Can, can you all see that? This is like line drawn cat, and it's purring. Um, and so, so it, this took off, and like within months, she was getting orders for like thousands of copies of this. Wow. She quit her day job, right? After a few years, she got burnt out, quit, like quit publishing it, sold it to some like official publisher. She was on the Today's Show. Like she was Cat on Fancy or something. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, she was on the Today Show. She was on like Good Morning America. Um, and so, like, it, it really, these are these views that um, people like that really resonate with people, mm. right? Um, you know, some are more successful than others. So do you that. hope that this show will inspire people to make make their own scene? Yeah, I think that would be cool. I think that, um, you know, as a, as a producer of small press publications myself, I always find it really inspiring to see, like, what other people do with the format, what they're able, who they're able to reach, what mm -hmm. they're able to do, like, you know, physically and aesthetically with, with this stuff. Um, and it's... It's really easy to do, you know? Um, so here's a really beautiful one that Gary Dewar put out. And he self-published this. And this is like a really quality um, chat book. And it deals with um, poems that he wrote about um, 2017. And as he says, the Annus Horribilis, which my Latin's a little rusty, but I think that probably means horrible year. Horrible year. Um, 
And so he has these views, and he's putting them out there, and people are, you know, buying it. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really great. Um, yeah, and there's like a, a, a kind of a just yeah, <laughs> uh, interesting like uh, variation in in like how, you know like here you have this really slick looking zine for for its time uh, or slick looking magazine, and it's all really like carefully typeset. Um, and it looks really professional. And then you have you have something a little more like this um, that you know the, the form the form fits this and the form fits this. You know what I mean? Like like the ideas fit the form in each of these. Yeah. And and so yeah, like you say, yeah, it's it's very interesting to see how people are able to get their message across in all these uh, varied ways. Some looking a little more professional than others. But you know that's not that's not necessarily working against the less professional stuff. It's it's just like it fits the idea a little more. Yeah. Was that a little too rambly? <laughs> no, no, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's um, there's definitely an appeal. It, it, it's all intentional, right? Like, so yeah, people totally. are choosing to do this, and you know, not to pick on Dave. I really, I actually, really love this one. No, yeah, um, it's awesome. Dave's, you know, it, it's it's a day in his life, right? Mm. And so he just drew it you know like he even made mistakes on i don't know if you can see it but down here he wrote it too faintly for um the photocopier so he had to you know rewrite that part over here he made a few mistakes and so there's this like immediacy and this you know kind of screams out this immediacy that um you know, this anti-aesthetic kind of thing where it doesn't really matter. Like, you're doing this thing, and you're doing it for yourself and for your friends, and that's OK, you know? Um, also, if you have this idea that you just need to get across yeah. right away, yeah. you know, just getting it across and getting it out there as fast as possible, you know, there's Yeah, it works. Yeah. It, why not? Why not? And um, so here's one, uh, Jason Lin's uh, 2 AM gumbo, 2 AM gumbo. Uh, he just started publishing this uh, last year, and it's a monthly. You can subscribe to it. Uh, and what he does is he um, just talks about his day, and he gives um, instructions on things that you can do. And it's very personal. And that's another kind of theme through a lot of this stuff. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but uh, this theme of um, sharing personal ideas mm. and um, which sort of strengthens the connections. You know, people subscribe, and you know, they feel like they know you, and you develop relationships that way. But it sort of like is a thread through a lot of this uh, stuff from the '80s on. Mm. Is um, uh, these personal stories, personal experiences, which is interesting to contrast it with the stuff up until the '80s. You know, the more hardcore political stuff. So, like at a certain point, it made more sense to self-publish um, in physical format your leftist political views, right? So Dollars and Cents is still around. There's still a magazine, but it's, uh, you know, it's more glossy. It's a um, little higher budget. They are still around. Yeah, they're still oh, around. Wow. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I don't think they're in Somerville anymore, but they're still around. But you know, uh, other groups who are operating on certain lines just do things on the web, right? So back in the day, it made more sense to physically print things. Now, because you just want to get the ideas out there, but now it's online. Mm -hmm. Whereas things with like with Jason, right? He gravitates towards this medium because it's a way to connect with people where his personal stories are not online, right? Like everything is indexed. You know, Google knows everything about us, right? What I had for breakfast cereal today, um, on down. So it's it's a way to be more private. Uh, which I think mm. is really interesting, mm. um, and to like maybe slow the pace of information down yeah. to yeah. like something in in somebody's hands. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting because it takes it takes a I, I don't know it, it's really intimate. Yeah, and it's forcing that intimacy on people to uh, to to publish something that they're going to be reading uh, in this way as opposed to the internet, which forces reading and information in a different way, a less intimate way. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Maybe. really true. Yeah, I read something. I read something that um, you know, I'm just going to make up a stat here, but you know, if you're reading an article, you really only skim like 40% of it. You know, there isn't that close attention to detail, and you have at your fingertips, you have all these countless viewpoints, and you could really get to know what other people think, 
if you spent time to actually read the stuff. Whereas with physical print, people actually will read it mm. and think about it. Um, share it, pass and, it along. Yeah, yeah, and it's physical. And like, so, you know, this wonderful comic by uh, Dave Ortega, Somerville artist, um, you know, this will last. Like, I, I'm not going to lose the link to this comic. This is going to be on my bookcase for a while. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to share it with a friend. I'm going to share it with a neighbor. Five years from now, when I've forgotten it exists, I'll find it again, and I'll reread it. And so these things last longer. Um, and yeah, I mean, so what do you, so this is, you know, of course, like Dave's comic, right? So why do you do it? What do you, what do you get out of it? Um, well, I make comics uh, because I just really love what comics can do. The word image combination uh, has been around since, uh, you know, the K paintings in Lascaux, France. Um, and, and even before then, you know, when our ancestors were telling uh, stories out of like the constellations and making pictures out of the stars. So uh, it's something, like I feel very strongly that uh, telling stories through comics is in our DNA. Um, and I'm not alone in thinking that. And I, so I want to, I, with this particular project, not to turn the interview on, on me, <laughs> but with this particular project, um, I wanted to tell the story of my grandmother. Um, and uh, it was just, just hearing the stories from her, uh, I, I was able to, uh, you know, at a certain point, I knew that I wanted to use comics to tell that story. Um, yeah, so I mean like, if, and I also make zines as well, and, and some of my zines are about, um, Lat all of my zines are about Latin America and uh, colonialism and imperialism and, and those kinds of ideas. And uh, a zine is, like, like you said, it's a real uh, immediate way of getting an idea across. Um, I was just in, in Brooklyn in, at, uh, at a comics festival, and there's always this one zine that I have uh, about the school of the Americas. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think I have people, that. People pick it up, and, and it always, you know, some people will just like flip through it and walk away, but for the people that actually read what it's about, like the actual school of the Americas that exists uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia, that for decades has uh, educated. Um, uh, military leaders in Latin America, um, teaching them counterinsurgency, kidnapping, um, terrorism, uh, and you know, so all this, all this um, tumultuousness in Latin America is, uh, you know, the U.S. has a lot to do with that, and so what is and that's still relevant today, obviously, you know, um, and I'm really going off on a tangent here. <laughs> so I'm going to rein it in and say mm -hmm. that, uh, yes, yeah, like, I would not be able to get this information across uh, through a different form. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and zines are very powerful in that way. And to see, to encounter people one-on-one -on -one in the fairs that I do and to see, uh, to see the reaction, to be able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and... Um, when, whenever I see that there is a connection there, uh, I'm very fortunate to see that at, you know, going to these different yeah. fairs and stuff. Yeah, and it's totally the connection. Um, you know, uh, so you, you often buy these things direct or through these tiny little distributors. Mm -hmm. And so it builds up like this community. And I know that I've gotten to know tons of people through small press publications. Um, it's also very lo-fi. Which is yeah, nice. Yeah. You know, it, like it, a, it, it goes nice back one. to um, to to networking one on one yeah. and finding out finding these people. You know, it's not easy. There's not like a massive you know zine network out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and everybody gets to know each other, yeah. and they're all supportive people, which I think is really great. Uh, another That's cool. like, like that. yeah. So this is a, a Jordan Stabile. I never know how to say his last name, mm. but he is a Somerville artist who lives in East Somerville. And he does these really beautiful, whimsical line drawings, uh, comics, mm. you know, as a side. He, he's a painter. Um, and, you know, they often feature, you know, like animals. And um, I really like his stuff. And the, the formats are always kind of fun. You know, like the traditional format is the, 
you know, half letter, eight and a half by 11, right? But he always kind of experiments with that. Um, one like sort of other beautiful network, I think, is um, poetry. So there's, um, Somerville has tons of, um, oh, here's another great zine, which is all about uh, Kyle McLaughlin. Um, yeah. And that's by another person who is actually priced out, uh, Andrea Mildred, um, who does fun stuff with like pop culture. Um, but um, poetry, I think, is this really beautiful uh, scene where, so, you know, not everybody reads poetry, so a lot of poetry is self-published or put out by small presses. And so this, um, there's this great network that's formed around this. This is uh, Deborah Schwartz's publication put out by Caddy Wumpus Press. And so Somerville is blessed by having like all of these small press uh, poetry presses, right? And Caddy Wumpus is one of them. Another one is um, Saverna Barva, I think is how you say it. It's run by uh, the current um, poet laureate, uh, Gloria Mindock. Um, Books of Hope also puts out a lot of poetry, uh, chat books. Hmm. Um, there's, you know, of course, the Media Center's Doug own Holder. Doug Holder, who has really a powerhouse. Um, he, you know, he's a wonderful poet, and if that wasn't enough, he's like just super supportive, you know, hmm. like he is always constantly promoting other people. He puts out uh, Ibbotson Street Press Magazine, um, which is, I think, in the 60s now. This is issue 40, you know, like they're up to issue 60. Mm. And so like this is this long-term project of his is just promoting other people's work. And um, yeah, and like you mentioned, he's a, he's a producer here yeah, at Community Media. Yeah. And that leads into a question that I, w I wanted to ask you about like showing in a community media space. Like community media is in a lot of ways the, um, the video parallel of zines, okay. I feel like. Yeah, because totally. Because people are able to get kind of esoteric, maybe fringy viewpoints across um, and, and have it shown on, on, on a cable channel. You know, where else can you do that? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and so in a lot of ways, you know, there's like a video parallel to, to Zine. So um, what do you think of uh, showing, a very leading question, <laughs> what do you think of showing uh, all yeah. this work in a in no, I'm, I'm media really, center? I'm really thrilled. I think, that, I think that it's great to have the opportunity to do this. And yeah, I mean, like the people who are connected to the media center are obviously concerned with local thought and local issues. And so I thought that this would be like a nice match for that. And it's a great platform for us to be able to, for the library to be able to share what we have uh, with, you know, this audience. So I'm really excited that we're doing this. Yeah, um, very, very, it's, it's exciting. And, yeah. and Somerville Public Library has been a really great community partner with Somerville Media cool. Center. And yeah. yeah, this is just, uh, you know, one and a long long line of uh, collaborative efforts yeah. between the two of us that we really appreciate. So cool. yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this how this uh, all, all turns out. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. And how people are going to react to it. Um, I'm fortunate to work here and, and I'll be able to see how people <laughs> yeah. react to it. Yeah, let me know. And uh, maybe I'll shoot a video and send it to you. Cool. Yeah, let <laughs> me know. Um, yeah, so um, I guess I just want to plug the, if I can, the Somerville Public Library Small Press and Local History Collection, which is where all this stuff comes from. And you know, everybody's welcome to come take a look. Um, the local history room is on the second floor of the main branch library. You have to talk to a reference librarian to get into it, but you can uh, do that. You're welcome to do that. The Small Press and Zine Collection, which is you know the newer stuff like Rock Candy, is located uh, on the second floor right near the graphic novel collection. And most of the stuff you can check out. Some of the older things, um, I actually don't have any here, but some of the older things uh, you cannot check out uh, just because of their age and fragility and all that. Um, but yeah, and it's really, um, one thing that I just wanted to say if we have time is it's really interesting to see all of this together uh, in assembling this show. Um, Somerville has been, you know, uh, kind of unique in the area of having like so much self-publishing over the years. And so Meg, my, my coworker Meg Ragland, uh, has found stuff like dating back to the early 1900s, uh, mm -hmm. self-publishing stuff um, uh, in Somerville. And so it's kind of interesting to see like this arc from going from uh, community groups trying to get their ideas out there in the 60s and 70s to 
um, all this wonderful poetry and these, um, you know, art books and um, small press zines. Uh, so just, it's interesting to see it all together. And I hope that everybody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that everybody likes it too. Um, and so Somerville Small Press publications over the years will be on exhibit here at Somerville Media Center on our art wall from uh, the, 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 the December 4th through January 31st. We invite everybody to come out to the opening reception, which is Friday, December 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, so thanks again, Tim, yeah. for dropping by and talking to us about some of the zines that will be on display. Yeah, totally. Glad to be here.